All right, Jane, let's start off by you telling the audience why you wanted your face to be obscured and your voice as well. Um, I guess with all the business going on here in Emerson, um, things have gotten a little hectic. There's people that are for it and against it. Um, and kind of no matter what you do, if you're for it or against it, you're going to get some backlash. Um, so no matter what you say, um, people are going to come back at you. And um, I've even had death threats and all kinds of things. So um, by talking to media or uh, even just normal people before. So it's kind of hard to share your opinion around here. Um, you're going to be frowned upon by somebody at some point. Have you had any personal experience with any of these migrants illegally crossing the border? Yes, I have had them knocking on my door before um, at about four o'clock in the morning. It was back in February. Talk to me. What was that like? Um, it was kind of scary because they don't just ring your doorbell. They ring it continuously and knock and bang until you literally open your door. Um, so, and, you know, I, I, they, they are very abrupt and I understand that they're cold or they're, they're trying to get in somewhere, but I had three kids in my, in my house and the ringing of the doorbell and the knocking on the door was terrifying for them. Um, they've been hearing about all this stuff going on around town and uh, the illegal uh, border jumpers jumping the border. And uh, we've warned our children to not approach them and to stay away from them because we don't know who they are. And uh, so when they heard all this going on, they kind of knew what was happening, but they were afraid because they're strangers. Um, so I had to tell them to stay in the house and, you know, it's four or five o'clock in the morning. You just woke up my whole household. Were they men, women, families? Were, could you tell where they came from? Uh, they were all uh, men. They were all um, darker skinned men. Um, I would say that they're in the 20 to 30 zone. Um, they were cold. They weren't carrying a whole a whole lot. Um, I had a hard time believing that they had walked very far because none of them were wearing ski pants or mitts or anything. Uh, the gentleman kept asking me to come uh, to hold his hand or touch his hand because he was so cold. And... Um, uh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, I, my husband wasn't home. Uh, I didn't want to let them in my house. I was on the phone with the RCMP. They were encouraging me to let these people into my home or my garage or my shed or my car. And I just kept saying no. And um, the RCMP said they were on their way and it was taking longer than expected. It had been, you know, 15, 20 minutes and no sign of them. And uh, my husband came home and uh, actually picked them up and took them to the border himself. So. And how many were there? Three. Did your kids ever talk to you about this after the fact? Yes, they definitely had questions. They wanted to know who was at the door, why, um, if they were in any kind of danger, um, if they, those people were okay, um, and basically where their dad had gone. What about other your neighbors, other people within the community? Have they had similar experiences? Many. Um, I know many people in the community that have had very similar situations. Um, there's been people uh, in town that have actually taken people into their homes because there's women and children showing up at the door and it's minus 30 outside. So um, obviously they're not going to leave infants and children freezing outside. Um, but again, you know, four or five o'clock in the morning, banging on their doors um, and, and scaring people. It's a very small community. We're not used to this and we're not used to random people banging on our doors. If I lived in a big city, I wouldn't let any stranger off the street into my house. So even because these people are jumping across the border and they're risking their lives, they know that when they do that. So I shouldn't be expected to let them in. What was what did it feel like when the RCMP told you to take these three strange men into your house until they got there? Um, at the time, I just kept saying no. And I just kind of kept shaking my head like, why are you encouraging me to let these people in? Like, you're supposed to be protecting me. I don't feel safe. I didn't feel safe. I felt that they were more on their side than they were on my side. I felt that they were there to protect them and not me. Do you think that that sentiment of uh, the migrants over the town is something that a lot of your neighbors feel? Uh, I would say that a, a large portion of the community of Emerson definitely is against this. Yes, I, I know that there are some people that are for it. Um, in my eyes or for the people that I know, um, the people out of the people I know, the majority is this is not okay. Talk to me about how the town has changed now that this border crisis is occurring here. Um, for some people, it's changed. Some people are just continuing their life as is, you know, with the thought in the back of their head that their kids could be approached at the park or anywhere in town, biking around or playing with their friends by these people. 
um, and just, you know, making them travel in groups so that at least they're not alone. Um, and, you know, locking our doors and our cars, things that we never used to do before. Um, I work very early in the morning. So often, especially, you know, in wintertime, it's, it's dark here till like 10 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Um, I, I definitely am looking behind me and running to my car to get in. And the second I'm in my car, I lock my doors. I don't know who's outside my house. Have you noticed changes when it comes to the investment into the town uh, with respect to security, more lights or cameras? Uh, definitely. We've had a few missing lights and, and some very dim lights in town for some time. Emerson doesn't give off a lot of light uh, uh, at nighttime. And recently, all of a sudden, all those bulbs have been replaced. Extra lights have been put in. Um, the ones that were dim before are very bright now. And there's also a camera that's been installed um, just uh, on the right-hand side of the, the bridge going out of Emerson. Tell me a little bit about the political response to this, the different levels, the local, the provincial, um, specifically. Uh, locally, uh, I would believe that most of our Reeves and MPs and MLAs and, and, and those types of people, they seem to be more conservative and um, more uh, wanting to make this stop or find a solution and not wanting to leave us in this position. Um, when it comes to the provincial and federal government, I'm not too sure they give two craps about what happens to us. Do you think that if this was a more liberal town, that liberal officials would be paying a little bit more attention to what the community is going through? Maybe. It is a more conservative area. I get that. The majority vote here it was conservative, um, but we're all Canadians. What do you think about the Prime Minister's approach to this? He's used the words positive and exciting and said that Canadians are proud about what's happening. I find um, Mr. Trudeau's response to this whole situation very upsetting. Um, you know, he was young and we were hoping for positive things to come from him when he became um, Prime Minister. And uh, even some of the Conservatives out here, I'm sure, voted for him because we just wanted to see Canada grow and prosper, right? Um, what he's saying terrifies me. You have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. You don't live here. You don't have children living in here. And if you were in my spot, you would not be telling these people to come across because you'd be worried for your safety and your kids' safety. I don't have an army of bodyguards to stand around me or around my house. Um, so maybe that's okay for him, but it's definitely not okay for me. Do you want the Prime Minister to visit Emerson? Uh... I honestly don't know what that would change. He can visit here, but how are we going to change his opinion? He's going to be surrounded by guards. He's going to be doing his thing. He's still the prime minister. Uh, it's not like he's actually going to be able to live here and feel what it's like to be part of this and have to live this on a daily basis. The weather's warming up now. Do you think there are going to be more migrants and what does that mean for the town? Definitely. Um, even though RCMP and CBSA are not releasing any numbers to us anymore, um, you know, we keep track with talking to people in the community, talking to our emergency response people, um, talking to people in Gretna, and listening to how many people are going through their migrant center. So, yeah, we know that there's more coming now than there ever was before, um, more than there was in April. Um, so we don't have that exact number, but we know it's more. A lot of the press around Emerson has focused on the stories of the migrants as opposed to the townspeople. What is your message for the media and also for the rest of Canada from on the ground and at the front lines of this border crisis? Our message to the media is that the more that you can come here and take what we say and make us look like racist hicks or people that don't care about other people in the world makes it even harder for us. Um, so when you come here and you want to talk to us and you want to be a part of this community so that you can get your story, um, you're going to find some people not very much liking you. You need to either stay away or produce the facts and uh, quit trying to dig for the story because it's right in front of you. And what about Canadians? Would you like to see a little bit more activism and the rest of the country rally around your border town? Absolutely. Um, you know, several suggestions have been thrown around. We have a Canadian army. We're not at war. Where is our army? Why can't they come here and defend our border? Um, they do have 24-hour RCMP now in town, uh, but that's more recent than anything. However, it's only one or two people that are sitting right by the border. People are still sneaking through. People are, you know, showing up in Arnott and Dominion City and in Winnipeg, and they've never even been processed or looked at by one RCMP or CBSA officer. So, yeah, we, we need help. For all of our reports from on the ground in Emerson and to help support our journalism, go to guardtheborder.com.